On the morning of May 25th, 1813, the U.S. opened up a massive artillery barrage on Fort George, firing what's called hot shot. And these are iron balls that have been heated up red hot in a furnace. These things came crashing into the fort, into the buildings, traveling at about 1,000 feet per second and doing an incredible amount of damage, but more importantly, setting the buildings on fire. After an eight-hour barrage, every wooden structure inside of Fort George was ablaze. Only the powder magazines survived. And incidentally, the powder magazine survives today at Fort George and is very likely the oldest military building in Ontario. Two days later, the invasion came, and the Americans landed not at Fort George, but along the shores of Lake Ontario on the other side of town. They amassed a huge army, over 6,000 men, plus a naval fleet of over 14 vessels, and these are floating artillery batteries, hammering the shore as the Americans are landing. Once the Americans successfully landed, there was a vicious but short firefight between the Americans and the British lines. Best description comes from American General Boyd, who described it as, for 15 minutes, the two sides exchanged a rapid and destructive fire at a distance of only six to 10 yards. Casualties were tremendous on both sides. Due to numbers and firepower, however, the British were forced to give way, leaving the town of Niagara, Fort George, the now captured uh, British headquarters of the Niagara region in American hands for about the next seven months. Battle Fort George was significant, uh, not only because this was occupied, U.S. occupied territory for the next seven months, but it also led to other uh, battles further inland, such as Stony Creek and Beaver Dams. After a long seven months, for a variety of reasons, the American Army dwindled down to very, very few numbers. In fact, by uh, early December, the American Army, that was close to 6,000, was now down to only about 100 men. And the decision was made to abandon the position here at Fort George and return uh, to uh, Fort Niagara on the American side. Unfortunately, the orders were given uh, in the process as the Americans were retiring is to also put the town of Niagara to the torch. So that for the poor citizens living here in the middle of a really harsh Canadian winter, get a knock on the door, very little notice to gather whatever belongings that you can because your house is about to be put to the torch. And that's exactly what happened. On the eve of December 10, 1813, the town of Niagara Lake was in ruins. For me, the War of 1812 is incredibly important for all Canadians because had things gone differently in this conflict, Canada today might not exist. Now, 200 years later, we've enjoyed 200 years of peace with the United States and the world's longest undefended border. My name's Dan LaRoche, and on behalf of Parks Canada, I'd like to welcome you to Niagara-on-the-Lake and the celebrations of the bicentennial of the War of 1812.